Hi, I'm Gene, and welcome to Assess Minutes, where we take a complex assessment topic and break it down to make it easily understandable, because minutes matter. A common question that comes into us is, why do test scores fluctuate? More often, folks call in about the fluctuation of scores for students who are more often taking the test. In other words, when a kid takes it in the fall and doesn't take STAR test again until the winter, there's been so much time and so much growth has a, that has occurred between those two periods uh, that many of the fluctuation elements get washed out. But for students that are taking it more often, particularly those students who are doing it every couple of weeks for progress monitoring purposes, we see some fluctuations in scores. They go up and they go down. And so folks call in and say, why is this happening? Well, there are several factors, each of which could cause this, and sometimes they become combined to cause even greater fluctuations. So let's explore them, what they are, and then let's talk about what you can do when you see a particular fluctuation within a score. The first one is the standard error of measurement. In other words, every academic test that there is in the world has a margin of error to it. It will report a score to you, but then say it is this score plus or minus a couple of points. The whole reason for that is that measuring what's happening inside a child's brain is an incredibly complex undertaking. And you can give a kid a test and immediately give them the same test again, and there undoubtedly will be some degree of uh, variance to that, some degree of error. Now, the standard error of measurement of STAR is no larger than any other major test out there, but again, if you are using the test more often, you might see some fluctuation simply due to this inherent factor of academic testing. Another reason that scores can fluctuate to some degree is the statistical phenomenon, scary concept, the statistical phenomenon of regression to the mean. And if we take a look at the normal curve that is drawn here, you'll notice that there are two arrows on it, sort of pulling it back to the center. And that is a really good visual way to think about regression to the mean. Because what that simply means is, over time, as kids take a test, some of your top performing kids will have some more normal looking scores. They will regress towards the mean. And similarly, some of your lower performing students will also have some higher scores. They will regress towards the mean. Now the big difference is you call about one of those instances, but you don't call about the other one. Uh, in other words, when the top kids dip, that's when we get the phone calls. When the lower kids spike, we start celebrating. But then sometimes we find that the next time they take a test, it's back down. The same type of thing is happening. This is simply a phenomenon of students testing over time. But again, it can cause some of those fluctuations that we might observe. Performance factors would simply represent particularly good or bad days on the parts of students. As human beings, we have some of those days where we're firing fully on all cylinders and other days where we just can't seem to focus and perform like we normally do. So sometimes kids sit down to take a test on a day that's simply not the particularly best day for them. And again, that would create some variance in their scores. And finally, there's the idea of fidelity of administration. In other words, are you administering or giving the test with fidelity in the conditions that are right? So the students sitting there, they're not having a particularly bad day. They are trying to focus. But are there factors out in the environment causing them to be distracted? For example, it was not uncommon when I was a school administrator for us to turn off the bells on state testing days. We didn't want the sound of the bells going off or announcements on the loudspeaker to disrupt students. But sometimes kids are sitting down to take star tests with all sorts of things going on around them. My own young nephew was actually sitting down at a star early literacy test one day, and the bell rang for students to go out to recess while he and several other kids were still finishing their test. Without really thinking about what she was saying to them, his teacher said, you all may go to recess as soon as you finish the test. Now think about what a young child is going to do. He quickly entered some answers. He had an artificially low score. It had nothing to do with the margin error of the test, regression to the mean, or good or bad day on the part of him. It was simply that the conditions under which he was being testing were causing some distractions to him. So scores fluctuate. They go up and down some. It could be when you see a score 
spike or dip. It could be one or a combination of these factors coming together on a particular day. So what should you do? First of all, if you see a student's test and it seems particularly out of the norm for them, as some folks have said, the best predictor of future performance is past performance. So if you see a test that seems totally out of line, you are always within boundaries to have a student sit down and take a STAR test again. Uh, in fact, if they take it on the same day, it will wipe away the first test that they took. The other message is look at testing over time and particularly, as I mentioned, for students in progress monitoring who are testing very frequently and for whom these factors will be more manifested, remember it's not about the individual test scores that they get within progress monitoring. It's about the trend line that represents their growth that is generated for them because the trend line pulls multiple tests together, thereby washing out many of these factors. But again, test scores fluctuate. It's part of the nature of this. Just be aware and realize that you can take some steps if you need to to correct a score.